Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Beyond the Reels where we take a deeper look at some of the most recent slot titles launched in the iGaming space. During this edition we will be focusing on Push Gaming's latest slot title, Land of Zenith, and we are thrilled to welcome Toby Woolhouse, product owner at Push Gaming. So welcome Toby. Happy to be here, thanks for having me. Um, can you just explain a bit about yourself for our viewers and the role of a product owner? Uh, yeah, sure, no worries. Um, so, I guess at Push Gaming specifically, uh, the product owner's role is kind of a... Uh, it does a lot of different things, I guess, in general, but our, our main focus is always about the games, right? We are... the product team is quite small, but we are kind of the masters of the project in some, in some cases. Um, so we are everything from uh, sort of a project manager in some senses, where we're going to be working with every different part of the development team. So that's our, our developers, our artists, our animators, uh, liaising with mathematicians. But we also take on roles like this, where we represent the game to people outside the company. So chatting to people like you, but also talking to operators and the casinos themselves when we're showing the game to them also. Mm -hmm. And today we're going to be taking a closer look at Land of Zenith. Can you just tell us a bit about the plot of the title and the themes and inspirations behind it? Sure, sure. Um, so initially, actually, this theme was led by one of our illustrators on the project. Um, and he would put together this really striking set of sketches and background locations and items all centered around these sort of floating islands uh, in this land in the sky, all this ancient technological civilizations. Um, there's also this sort of story of sky pirates, heroes and villains as well, which are high characters of our high symbols, at least. Um, and sort of the main inspiration there is sort of from um, Gulliver's Travels of, sort of the, the floating town of Laputa. And then and also other works inspired by this text, like uh, like the Studio Ghibli film, for example, kind of like other steamworkish kind of, uh, oh, sorry, steampunkish kind of uh, bits of fiction and works. Mm -hmm. And what was your thought process behind choosing these themes? Well, so actually when we were working on this project in the early stages, um, we didn't have a theme in mind. So sometimes there's a game where it's together very clearly as like, oh yeah, this theme and this mechanic just go hand in hand. So like uh, Fat Rabbit's a great example of how you could sort of the theme of the rabbit eating the carrots and growing bigger. Um, and then we realized, oh, it should be a wild that grows larger and maybe the carrots can wild as well. So there's a very clear uh, connection there. But that wasn't the case here, actually. We kind of had a selection of features and a general game flow we wanted to work on. Um, but we weren't sure what, how that should be represented or what that theme should look like. And it was during sort of a, a concept day, we call them internally, where everyone from across the company can come and pitch ideas uh, for themes, mechanics, features. And it was during this that the illustrator I mentioned sort of brought forth this set of sketches and this really cool theme idea. And upon seeing that, uh, the visuals of the ancient technology really solidified the identity of these the ideas we had in our in our heads over on the on the product team for new concepts. Um, and we just thought it felt like a natural fit to sort of marry the ideas for the features we had with this this look that we've now ended up with. Mm -hmm. And during the initial development process of Land of Zenith, was there anything that you can highlight which was originally planned for the title but then was like later drops or scrapped? So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, one of the ones that comes to mind actually is sort of a maths consideration we end ended up having to make. So during the, the base game feature, which is sort of we call the bouncing mystery feature, um, we wanted to, as well as add mystery symbols to the reels through this new sort of bouncing mechanism, we wanted to find ways of if, if of, say, one of these bouncing balls strikes your mystery symbol again, can it add a multiplier maybe so that we can have it continually enhance? And so you might have a case of where you've got a screen full of mysteries and a lot of them have got like times two, times three on them. Um, ultimately, this was dropped because it was just deflating the rest of our pay table. You know, for us to afford to put it in the game in the way that we thought would be exciting and could show a lot of potential, um, would just drive the regular pays of the game down a lot. And so in the end, it was kind of dropped to focus more on these like big full six for kind payers on the, the mystery feature. Mm -hmm. And certainly within the game, I thought it was, you've used like quite a lot of bright and vibrant colors. Um, what, was, what was the purpose behind this and how does it actually impact the player's experience within the title having such vibrant like, colors? So I think th this isn't actually something unique to Land of Zenith, actually. I think that a lot of push gaming's games in general have quite vibrant, strong color schemes. Like it's only occasionally we'll do a game with kind of a more muted or a darker theme. So last year it was like um, Mystery Museum, for example. But even then, Mystery Museum has some quite vibrant symbols in there. We really push the colors in some cases to really highlight 
uh, the valuable symbols and that's really where the the role of this brighter color scheme comes in it's all about helping the player identify what they want to see to my mind so um we want to create a really strong visual distinction between the low payers the mid payers the high payers and then also special symbols like your wilds and your scatters um so it's like for example because for example in this game our turner oh, symbols and our oh, oh yeah we have it. So we just landed the Turner symbol there, which has lined up that mechanism on the left. So we're going to get this bouncing mystery I was mentioning. So every time these balls bounce around the reel, we're going to leave behind mystery symbols. Okay, so you've got, only got a few. Will we maybe connect with the scrolls? Ah, <laughs> just just miss. But yeah, so as I was saying, uh, we want to really help the player to see the distinction between the different symbol types in the game, both through sort of the render quality and how their silhouette fills the space. So having these characters for the highs, these objects for the mids, and these small sort of tokens for the lows. And then also do it by, by the color, you know. Amongst those characters, you want to see like a rising uh, level of brightness and warmth in their color going through the hierarchy. So you've got this green character showing your lower of the high symbols, then the girl in purple. Oh, that's a big win. Well, hey. <laughs> how much we want? I think it's probably going to be about 30, maybe. Mm -hmm. Oh, bang on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the lowest of our high of our high symbols. This this guy, this sort of uh, robotic chap in green. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, so then the girl in purple and the chap guy in red, and then the the villainous character with the top hat in gold. Those are our high payers, and you, you want to get that rising brightness in the color and the warmth there. So obviously, oh yeah, this one is definitely more valuable than the next just by looking at them. Because I think you know it's not uncommon that we see games use very recognizable symbols like you know your card suits or your your royals mm -hmm. to show ooh, ooh, anticipation. Want to get that turner on real four? Come on, ah, oh. oh, real one instead. <laughs> not going to go in. Ah, close. We're still pretty close to going in. Uh, but yeah, mainly it's to help players like really see where the value is in the symbols and what they want to see on a full screen or like when they're looking at a screen full of symbols, which one they want to be looking for on the next spin. Mm -hmm. Perfect and. We mentioned about the color schemes and stuff. I just want to kind of focus a bit on the characters actually designed. Um, just put this back on the whole spin. Yeah. Um, it's such a kind of a steampunk vibe. Certainly when you started developing this title, was steampunk always the way you wanted to go with this? And then, no, no. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, I finished. I jumped then, in too early. No, it's cool. And then finishing off, how did you come to designing the specific characters, the higher being symbols? So I think the steampunk thing came in very strong during the when the theme was kind of nailed down. We thought, yeah, we want this really strong theme uh, of these of this sort of ancient technology in the sky and these 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 interesting characters. And I guess there was a little bit of a narrative behind that to some extent, where we wanted this, like, the idea of like, oh, what if there's sort of this this crew of sky pirates who are kind of exploring these ancient ruins and trying to discover it? Oh, no anticipation, real four green. No. <laughs> ah, miss again. Always a tease. Yeah, indeed, indeed it is. We've got a penchant for our high volatility games, so it's, we're not we're not changing that for this game at least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so we had these sort of kind of steampunkish sky pirate characters. We've got you know the bomber jackets, the goggles, um, which we really like and thought were really cool. And then we also had the idea of like, well, what if we also had like a villainous character? You know, someone who rather than trying to discover this technology and you know and bring it to the rest of the world, we had someone who's trying to use it for their own ends. And that we had that in the sort of super high one character, the sort of the guy with the top hat uh, and the monocle, who's like trying to take this technology and do something evil with it. Um, and this is something that's hard to bring into the game because, you know, we'd, we'd love to put like a whole glossary of, of the game's story in the game somewhere. But I think too many players just wouldn't click on it um, and would be just interested in spinning the slot. But it's something we like to think about behind the scenes when designing the characters and not all the visuals of the game, especially. Mm -hmm. And just above your head is the disc me mechanism. Um, from a glimpse, this looks quite like a complicated, complica uh, sorry, a, a complex mechanism, complex to say. Um, You've already walked us through it a little bit. Can you just explain a bit more so players can fully understand what this is? Of course, yeah. So I guess when we started the project, one of the things we really wanted to do is, as usual, I guess, uh, is find new ways of doing things that we think players get a lot out of in our games. I about out of games in general, I think. Um, we don't just want to be retreading the same things we've always done. And one of the main things for this game is that we wanted to avoid a three scatter trigger. There's certainly th a lot of things that are good about three scatter triggers in games for your free spins feature. And we also wanted to avoid random triggers for base game features as well. And so we wanted to find a mechanism, or a, a, a way of a mechanic, I guess, or what I'll call it, for triggering the base game and triggering the free spin features um, that would help augment the rest of the gameplay. So rather than just being tuned out and only turning your attention back on when the anticipation starts, let's say, 
um, we wanted to have facilitate something that players could focus on and pay attention to throughout their spins. Uh, and so they could be looking for certain things on the next spin to be like, okay, this is what I need to trigger my feature. This is what I need to trigger my feature now. And the mechanism was of the way we, we, we solved that where you have the, above my head, you can see these three different concentric rings. Each one has these little black grooves in it. What you're aiming to do is line up three of these grooves to make a full line of three. Um, and when you do that, that's going to trigger the base game feature or the free spins feature, um, depending on some circumstances that I'll come about back to you in a minute. Um, the way you affect this mechanism is on the reels, you'll land here and there, these Turner symbols. You're going to see one highlights in reel four there. Each one has, let's look like, a, looks like a stopwatch a little bit, and it has like a, a, a clockwise or counterclockwise arrow on it. Ooh, straight back into the tease. Come on, game. You can't do this to us again. No, no, no. Ah! <laughs> so every time you land one of these sort of these, these Turner symbols with the arrow on it, it's going to affect one of these rings, uh, turning it either clockwise or counterclockwise, depending on which uh, arrow is on the symbol you land. Uh, so, and they, each one, the colors correspond to which one, it, which uh, which ring it is. So on reel six, you get the blue ones, which do the outermost one. On reel four, you get the green ones, which do the middle one. And on reel, one, uh, reel two, you get the golden ones, which do the innermost ring. And so every spin, you can kind of see, okay, so right now we want the innermost ring to go one step clockwise. So we're looking for that yellow turner on reel two going clockwise. Uh, alternatively, actually, we also could do it with a, a blue turner on reel six going clockwise as well, because you can see there, we're almost lined up there also. And so what the aim here is for players, not that one, we don't want to see that one. <laughs> but now it's, see now, because of that other one that landed, we are still very close to a feature though, actually. Now we can mm -hmm. see there's actually three situations where if we land the correct turner, we're going to go in on both the outermost reel, the innermost reel, and the middle reel. And so actually, as the game as the game is playing and as this turner shifts and moves slightly, your the way you get into the feature into the feature changes slightly. And we want players to like really be involved in this gameplay experience and to be paying attention to their reels and to their turners and say, right, what I need this spin, what I want to see this spin. Um, and so the next time we get anticipation, we'll be sort of one of these three on any reel would take us in. Mm -hmm. Fine. Um, with so early, we saw the the kind of the bouncing ball mechanism which you kind of talk, briefly talked about, just as we try and wait to get into the main feature. Can you just talk us through a bit more about that bouncing ball mechanism, how it originally came about the idea, and if there was any kind of changes within the development of that idea, or was it just a straightforward, this is a great idea, we're gonna include it. So um, there were some changes I mentioned earlier on the math side of it, but actually the, we had just finished a mystery museum actually at the time when we were looking into this feature where that's a game which, which also has like a lot of mystery stacks in there and we wanted to find we, we like mystery museum for a lot of different reasons but one thing that we issue we have is that because we're always given the full stack there's only so many ways you can get those stacks on the reels mm -hmm. and so we wanted to find what's a more interesting way of adding mysteries to the reels that felt dynamic and exciting and fast-paced but also wasn't just random oh another big win oh, nice. that's it's going to be about mid, it's a mid payer, so I'm thinking about 20 ish, maybe a bit more. Mm. 28, okay, not bad again. We really want to see some high payers on that kind of line. Like the, <laughs> in this game, the, the fives and six of a kinds are really chunky, especially on the characters. Mm -hmm. uh, it's what you really want to see. But yeah, so with the mystery symbols, we wanted to find ways to apply them to the reels, interesting dynamic patterns that felt like an interesting sequence of events playing out, rather than just you know randomly dropping them on the feature on the reels you normally see in these kind of features. Like we do, like we did this for for Wild, for sorry, not Wild Swarm, uh, for Fat Santa, for example, and Fat Rabbit. And so we we wanted to find something new, and this mechanism of sort of having a ball in the center of the reels, then fires off and it starts to pinball around the reel set, bouncing off the edge of the reels and leaking behind mystery symbols and potentially splitting off into more balls that then can collide with each other and cause all sorts of stuff, all sorts of things to happen. Uh, potentially leaving behind absolutely loads of mystery symbols. We thought would create this really fun, exciting sequence of events to follow that every time these balls are bouncing around differently, things are changing speeds um, and you get these really big explosions sometimes of mystery symbols, possibly forming these big six of a kind pairs you're really looking for. And we, we were really excited to try this out. And it is a very different approach. Like one of the things I like to say about it is that actually, unlike other features where, you know, you might have a, a sort of predetermined pattern of, of symbols you can be applying to the reels, perhaps behind the scenes. This is something that actually is dynamic every time. Every time those balls are bouncing across the reels, we're actually doing a, a calculation to determine the trajectory of the ball, where it's going to bounce off next, if they collide. It's the visualization is actually what is going on rather than sort of predetermined pattern. Uh, that is being plonked on the reels after the animation plays. If you, if you, if you follow me. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're in. We're into a feature actually just now in the base game feature. Are we? Okay. All right. So we're gonna see it happen here now. 
So let's see where this ball goes. You want to see lots and lots of bouncing balls here. Lots of mysteries. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. This could be a really good one. Oh, nearly. You want to connect on that <laughs> top row. Butterflies. Ball! We connected. Yeah, we connected. That's going to be nice. <laughs> I'm going to guess around 100. For, for a six of a kind. Like a few lines, six of a kind there, in fact. Ooh. We're going. Oh, okay, not quite a hundred. I <laughs> think you bigged it up there. <laughs> bit, bit over, over egged it. I did. I over egged it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Still, that's all right. But imagine that. Oh yeah, that was nice. Oh, we could have got a few more mysteries. That was a good one. So we've now triggered the main feature. Can you just guide us through what's going to occur now? Sure thing. Yep. So I, for anyone who's played uh, Joker Troop, um, you might be familiar with the hyper modes free spins from that, where we give the player a preset uh, amount of time to have free spins during, rather than a preset amount of free spins. So as long as you've got time on this timer above my head, you're going to keep spinning. Um, and what you're looking to do here is land these wild symbols, which fill up the meter, you can see filling up. There we go. Which resets the timer back up to 10, 10 seconds. And so as long as you keep getting wilds, you're going to keep getting unlimited free spins basically um the nice thing as well is that every time land a wild the reels are going to spin a little bit faster um accelerating this reel set so as you continue to to reset the timer as we're doing now we've got 15 free spins already down we still got five seconds to go come on a few more wilds um we're going to keep going faster and faster oh come on don't take us out now <laughs> oh come on oh no four in the final spin so they hopefully we keep getting wilds and keep going a bit faster and this is a kind of feature that i think you know, it doesn't do what a traditional, traditional slot would do, where we very clearly show you all your wins. I think the, the gameplay experience of something like this is actually really novel, of where it just goes absolutely crazy. It's the point where you can't even follow it anymore, and the game is just flashing win, 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 win in your face. And you get to the end like, what, what's happened? And you see a massive count up, exactly what you want to see. And, uh, and we, really, we really hope the players really buy into this kind of, this different kind of gameplay experience, basically. The game just feels like it's gone absolutely insane. So we'll just wait to see what happens here. Yeah, it's, it's going right here. Come on. Yeah. We've got all the little lows. One more wild. Come on. We got it. Oh, there we go. Okay, next, next level. Come on, keep us going. Oh, I can see the high pairs. And yeah, as you as you get further in as well, these high pairs start to stand out more and more. Bigger stacks than coming in. Oh, nearly again. One more. Nice. Next level. 50 axis so far. Let's get it going. Nice. A bit more high pairs. Come on. Oh, nice. Another cluster there. Nearly. Come on. Oh, oh, oh. Full line. <laughs> 200x. Woohoo. <laughs> So yeah, then that's yeah, that's sort of the high pay is starting to kick in now a lot. Come on, a bit more, a bit more. Oh, that's a good one. There we go. Oh, we're at 300 now. Flipping heck. It just keeps going. And yeah, this is this is like the game point where the game just feels absolutely bonkers already. We've got so much further to go on the speed. But I've still got four more levels to go. Oh my goodness me! <laughs> <laughs> so that's the super high payer. He pays massively! Oh god. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> oh, we're going a bit nuts on this one. <laughs> this, this is a mad one. Um, getting to these top level speeds, the game goes absolutely bonkers. Because, you know, as it speeds up further, we also stick in more high. Oh, my goodness me. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh. So, yeah. You just, just seeing the massive full screens of that guy just absolutely blows your balance out of the water like that. So, we've, ju we've just seen the... <laughs> Probably the best one we could get. <laughs> yeah, that's um, it's a good result. Not not the best one, I'll say, uh, <laughs> but that's, that's a good result. Like I don't think anyone's walking away to satisfy with that one. <laughs> um, so, if we look back on all the questions I've asked you, everything we've seen in this game, um, how does all this enhance the player's experience within this slot? And what does what do push gaming want players to feel when they play this slot? So I think I was kind of mentioning it earlier a little bit, where. Some players, I uh, can't kind of say, like they want to be able to stick a game on auto spins and maybe tune out a little bit, or maybe they're not paying full attention to it, or maybe, you know, and, and some players they want to be able to to oh, look over and things activate, a feature's going off, uh, mm -hmm. the anticipation's here, and they tune back in for that, and that's cool. We want to offer the experience of those players as well, but Land of Zenith is a game we really want to to appeal to players who want to be engaged, players who are here to sit their spins on or just spin through manually and watch these spins happen and be like, right, what I want to see next? What's the next thing I want to occur? And to really be tuned in and locked on to that gameplay experience and to, to be following the game every step of the way. Everything the game tells them, they, they receive it and they are then adjusting their, their, their focus. So they're like, right, okay, I want to see this now. I want to see that now. And both the base game feature with the Bouncing Mystery, the free spins with this absolutely insane uh, hyper experience we're giving away, and then also the mechanism of triggering these things with the with the disc mechanism. We all of these encourage players to really pay their pay attention, really be focused 
on the game as it's playing and to get everything every little bit of a, of entertainment out of every spin so even when the game isn't making massive wins for you all the time there's always you feel like something's happening there something can always go off the next spin something always ready to happen because you're aware of what the game is telling you and you're you're locked on to that experience somewhat mm -hmm. and the final question for me uh what has push gaming got in store for 2021 that can get excited for? Oh, it's it's it's. There's, we've got a bunch of games in the pipeline that we're all super excited to show to the public. But the the biggest one that I, we have to shout about is Jamming Jaws 2. So we've we've done a. I think we've done a really good job of building something that will be both really exciting in new and unexpected ways for players, but will also feel like Jamming Jaws at its core. You know, we. You know, we were absolutely astonished by the response that Jam and Jars has gotten over the last few years since its launch. And we wanted to make sure that players still feel like there's something new to find there. And that, that this kind of gameplay flow uh, has more to it than what we've done already with Jam and Jars. And we are so excited to show players what we've, what we've done. It's just going to be absolutely incredible. Perfect. Well, Toby, it's been an absolute pleasure having you. Uh, it's been great being walked through Land of Zenith. It's, a, it's an amazing game. Okay. No, no, thank you very much, James. It's um, been an absolute pleasure being on here. Yeah, and I look forward to Jam and Jazz too in the in the summer. Oh, please do. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure we'll have lots to shout about in the next few months. So keep your eyes peeled. Mm -hmm.